everybody welcome back and uh, many of you uh, it's Christmas time and you are probably thinking of buying yourself a super expensive gift like a CNC machine or uh, you know something of the like so uh, this video is for people who are brand new to the CNC world and if you happen to have a hundred thousand dollar eight by four CNC machine your name is Carl this video is not really for you and you know probably not going to be very interesting to you. So, uh, a lot of things that I have learned while using my CNC machine over the last, uh, I don't know, six, eight, ten months or so, and I thought I would share many of these things with the brand new person who is not familiar with CNC and just learning or maybe thinking about getting into CNC. So, these are some tips that I have in no particular order, and I don't even know how many I'm going to have, uh, but these are things that I've learned that hopefully uh, a new person walking into this will 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 understand. So let's jump into some of those things. I will do my very best to uh, put uh, chapters down so uh, you can search them if you need to. But uh, here are the things that I've learned in my particular CNC. Now I've got the Onefinity uh, for various reasons, but there's a whole bunch out there, and so the tips will. Uh, be generic enough to work with most machines, okay? So uh, don't worry about having a different machine than what we've got here. The tips are going to be the same, okay? Let's jump right in. First tip that I have is going to be make sure you have a very sturdy base to work with. I built this base out of uh, some 4x4s and 2x4s with a very, very flat piece of uh, melamine uh, that has an actual another piece of three quarter on top of that so this is going to be very sturdy you don't want this thing bouncing around okay so step one make sure your base is very very sturdy next tip that I have for you make sure your machine is square okay so the easiest way to make sure that your machine is square this is again happens to be a onefinity but this goes for other machines too if you've got one of your arms that are cockeyed a little bit one way or another it's going to bind or potentially not uh, you know work properly or as smoothly as you want so the easiest thing to do is what you do is you zip down a couple screws into your table you then bring over your piece zip down this side as well and then what you're going to do is you're going to run your xy axis all the way back and then with those back there zip 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 now your machine should be pretty darn close a couple people have commented on some of their machines that there's a small gap here or potentially on the other side now what this means is you're slightly out of square and that's okay um, you know a little bit of gap you know a 16th or so is nearly not going to kill anybody but uh, if you really want to square it up that's the way to do it bring it all the way forward uh, screw them down bring it all the way back screw it down and you might need some micro adjustment you know this way or that way depending on kind of uh, you know where where in relation to the table you're at next tip is going to be for the waste board itself so a lot of questions about waste boards uh, question do I need to surface the waste board the answer is yes yes you do uh, do you need to have a waste board also yes the answer is yes you do so uh, remember your waste board uh, has to be flat okay the table that you built is probably not going to be perfectly flat and the only way to reference and make sure that your waste board whatever you're putting on your waste board is completely square to whatever you're doing so you notice we've got a very kind of square piece here because it, it's you can get really close but it's going to be impossible to get your waste board perfectly square in in relation to your machine you're going to get close and that's okay uh, but you're going to want to uh, make a file very quickly uh, make a, a, a pocket file within your software and then take off a, a, a tenth or so so when you do your z probe make sure you're probing off the very tip top here and you come down maybe not even a tenth of an inch maybe even 0 0.05 of, of an inch really really minimal run it all the way through raster is probably going to be the best way to do it uh, so you don't leave a lot of you know funky lines but then you know that this is perfectly flat to your machine Okay, in relation to the machine, everything here is going to be in relation to the machine itself. It is the, the beauty of CNC is that it does exactly what you tell it to do. 
The problem with CNC is it will do exactly what you tell it to do. And if you tell it to do something stupid, it will do something stupid. Okay, so everything here is going to be in relation to the machine itself. Okay, next thing you're going to want to do after you have the waste board completely surfaced is you are going to want to make some reference lines that are perpendicular to each other so that you know on your waste board where the X and Y axis uh, go. So in my particular case, I used holes like this that uh, meet that fit perfectly these conduit uh, pieces. You can use PVC too. I like conduit because uh, uh, for various reasons, but um, you have to make sure that the machine, you know exactly where the machine is squared to. So the machine uh, knows, but you don't know. See where I'm going with this? So the best way to do this is to run a file either with grid lines or in my case I used holes uh, to make sure that I know exactly where the X and Y axes, axes are on the machine. Okay, so you need to know where those particular pieces are. All right, so I have those holes there for a reason, and that's going to be my next tip. Big question that gets asked a lot is, how do you hold down your workpiece so that it doesn't move around? Now, I had originally started with the double-sided tape method, which is fine until it's not. I started pushing the machine and started really kind of seeing how much I could hog out at one time while still being efficient. And I found the tape, uh, while fine for a few things, ultimately doesn't work very well. Okay, Other people will swear by glue and tape, which again, in a pinch is fine. But after a while, this stuff starts to add up. Okay, This is the blue tape, you know, it's, it's fine and it works. But uh, after a while, it starts getting messy. You start having a lot of... Uh, you know, uh, garbage, you know, piling up. So really, having a repeatable solution is going to be the best way to do it, which is why I have these holes, okay? So these holes are made by the machine, which then I know for a fact that they are perpendicular and parallel to the machine. So they are at a perfect 90-degree uh, angles to the machine. So I know exactly where the straight lines are are going to be. Now, I made them perfectly sized for these right here. Okay? Now, intentionally, I put these in here, okay? And I also made these clamps like this. I made a series of these to hold down my work pieces. Now, you can use screws. Let's say you have an you can make an oversized piece. You can then screw it to your wasteboard. I don't like this as a uh, uh, a first option, just because after a while you end up making a ton of holes in your spoil board, which, like for example, I've got one here from a piece that I was using that was pretty big. You got to come back and sand it, res resurface your spoil board. Try as much as possible not to mess with your spoil board. As an example, I have a bit of a mishap here, and now I've got a bit of a groove cut into uh, my spoil board, which is is not good CNC practice. Okay, so I screwed up here, and at some point I'm going to have to redo this. So if you imagine if you're doing 10, 50, 100 different pieces, and you're and you're got these little screw ups like this, what's going to happen is you're going to have a whole board full of it, and now your board's not flat anymore. So let me show you how these work, and uh, why I prefer this repeatable method over and over and over again. Okay, there's another option as well. I made these super quick. If you need to like just hold a, a thing a thing down and you can't get your the tool to do the the, the, the garbly gook, you can hold it from an angle, screw it to the waste board, and then it will hold it down. Again, in, not a great option. This is you know screwing it down is the last option. This is my first one. Let me show you how it works and why I love doing it. Here's why the whole system and these little clamps work so well okay so i've got this set up to where the machine will home exactly at this corner right here so another tip i have for you when it says do you want to home the machine the answer is no no i don't why because at the end of the day the machine returns back to the home position here 
when I turn the machine off, I no longer have to worry about where that home position is because watch what happens. Because these holes are perpendicular to each other, all I have to do is move my workpiece all the way over to the left. Okay, now I know it's straight this way. And then I bring my workpiece down here against my stops. Okay, make sure it's in there. Now, I know that it is in exactly the right place for right here at this corner. And I reference my software from this corner, everything that I do. So I never have to rehome the machine. The only thing you ever have to do is your Z axis. That's why the whole system that I have works best. And what I do, I come in here. Put your little clamp in Mia. Take another clamp, put it in Mia, and I do have to go get a spacer. So how this works is we have little spacers like this. Now the shape of this does matter because if you have your pivot point not exactly in the right spot of your of your clamp, it is not going to uh, clamp tight. So if you want the STL for this, I'll sell it to you. I don't know, a couple of bucks, but it is. It is worth it. So now, uh, what I'll generally do is I'll tighten the top first. So I've got my spacer here, and I'll just tighten it to where I got it. Make sure it's nice and flat against it. Give it a little a couple love taps. Tighten this one, and now this thing is not going anywhere. Okay, repeatable. I do not mess with my my board at all. And I can move these any place that I want and completely reusable over and over and over again. Next tip, remember when I said about homing the machine, it comes back to this corner every single time. I'm going to go ahead and hit the home machine. Do you want to go back to your XY origin? Why, yes, I do. It is exactly in the right place every time. All I got to do, turn the machine off, and it will stay in that position, and it considers that now its home position. Less work, more repeatable, easier. Save yourself some time every single time. Lower left, sometimes people use different corners, but this is the one that works for me. Let's talk about bits to have. It's a question that everybody keeps asking over and over and over again. Uh, this is one of my, uh, this is just the CNC drawer. Uh, it's going to be different for everybody because you're going to do different processes. You're going to do a bunch of different, uh, you know, carvings and, and uh, you know, shapes and things. So this is what's worked for me. Uh, I have uh, one of the 6.2 that uh, you may have seen in a previous video about inlays. I do have a kind of 60 degree for really fine things. I do have a rounded bull nose. I have a quarter inch clear and I have a number of these eighth inch clear pieces. And then I have a couple of these half inch ones when I'm doing like MDF doors or one piece doors or something. I also have a surfacing bit as well. It's a, a, a one inch uh, surfacing bit. And then a couple roundovers with uh, just a real cheap set of 90 degree uh, V bits. Uh, honestly, don't use those much anymore. Uh, for what I do, but every once in a while. So some, some nice uh, bowl cut rondo roundovers, series of um, end mills, and a couple just kind of detailed ones. Here's the other tip I have for you. Buy multiples of your bits so that when you break them, and you will, you will have an extra and you don't have to have a lot of downtime uh, in your shop. Okay, so downtime is bad, hurts productivity, and uh, always have a couple extra on hand, especially the smaller bits that can break really easily. I know it's a little hard to bite the bullet on some of these that are $65 a piece, but having a couple on hand will make a difference uh, in productivity time and you know, kind of uh, you know, keeping, keeping the ball rolling. All right, let's talk about Z-Probe process just for a second because that seems to be confused, you know, confusing for a few people. One thing, make sure, I always work with flat stocks, so it's always been milled. I mill, it, I mill everything myself, and everything is perfectly flat. But make sure everything is, you know, nice and tight to your board before you Z-axis, okay? X and Y, already talked about, right? Right smack dab over that corner. It does, it homes itself uh, when I turn the machine on, okay? 
So the thing you're going to want to do, move it to a place. Now generally, that's a bit much for me. So I always try to pick the same spot over and over again. So if I'm carving over here, I always want to Z the same spot, you know, just to make sure I'm referencing the same spot, especially if I have to repeat bits. Now, here's my suggestion because I have done this and I have messed up so many bits because of it, okay? Is take your magnet probe, stick it to your collet, okay? Now, when you hit your probe Z, it's going to say, hey, want to make sure these two touch so that they can talk to each other. Do not take this and touch it to your stand, okay? Because what can happen is if these two things cannot talk to each other, what will happen is your Z will come down, keep coming down, keep coming down, and not recognize it and break your bit. So the easiest way to do this, I'm trying to show the, the screen here as well, is to take your small uh, stand, touch it. Okay, it recognized it because it turned green. This is on the Onefinity machine. And then that's how I know that this is now talking to this, or it can talk to this uh, through the magnetic process. Okay, so then you can just hit your confirm, and it will go down slowly. And now I know it won't jam itself immediately into the probe and break it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's my suggestion on Zing properly, same spot every time, and uh, don't break your bits. One thing we're going to talk about real quick is software. There are so many softwares out there, all I can really tell you is you have to find the one that works for you. If you're just doing carvings for families or making signs, uh, you know, some of the you know more inexpensive ones are going to be just fine for you, um, but I use Vectric. Uh, because I do a lot of complicated inlays and very complicated shapes and a few other things. So, I, you know, some 3D carvings. So I kind of need that. But, you know, the software, unfortunately, is something I can't answer for you. Only your budget and what you're doing can, uh, you know, figure out what you need. Finally, the last tip I'm going to give you as a new CNC person is have a process, Okay. Make sure when you turn the machine on, you are doing the exact same things over and over and over again. I cannot tell you how many bits I've broken or how many pieces I've ruined because I did things in the wrong order or kind of got caught up in some things and, and forgot that I needed to do this or I needed to do that and ended up ruining a piece. So uh, some processes that are going to be very important are homing your machine and making sure it knows exactly where it is. Z... Uh, Z probing uh, every single time if your machine doesn't do it automatically, which by the way, I'm jealous and Carl, you can, you can uh, shut up now. The uh, process for changing your bits, making sure, you know, you don't over tighten them too much and, uh, you, know, you know, how to get them out of there. Uh, processes in putting the stock into your machine, hitting the correct buttons in the right order, have a process because this is a Carlism, and he has taught me a lot about CNC. And that is the nice thing about CNC is they will do exactly what you tell them to do. The downside is is they will do exactly what you tell them to do. And if you tell it to run itself right into the the workpiece and destroy the bits and take your router with it and destroy the workpiece. It will do exactly that. So have a process. So I always have a word at the end of my videos that says, hey, uh, if you want uh, to get a question in or something I can help you with, um, the, the word of the day is process. Okay, process. If you want a process or you don't want to put that word in there so that I'll get to your comment first, go ahead and put that in there. If not, have a good rest of your day.